with some snow and ice outside, the Peterson Event Center is sure to thaw things out in Pittsburgh. Their beloved Panthers are at home to take on the Clemson Tigers. Both teams clawing away in the middle of the pack, trying to get traction before the month of March. You look at the ACC standings. Well, this Clemson team has now lost three in a row. But Pitt coming off a very big win against Georgia Tech. We shall see tonight. The tall Virginian is by my side, Dan Bonner. Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. Justin Shimpenny is one of those guys that has really come along to help Jeff Capel's guards out. He's coming off a career performance. Tim, you're absolutely right. Both of these teams are looking to make a move. And it's certainly going to help the Pitt Panthers if Justin Champagny can perform the way he did against Georgia Tech. He had 30 points. He had nine rebounds. He had a couple of steals. He had a blocked shot. Now, Champagny is a guy who is best right around the basket. He is a low percentage three-point shooter, but you can't afford to leave him alone out there because he can make it. But when he's driving, when he's attacking the basket, he's very, very dangerous. We're at that time of the year when attrition, injuries, maybe some sickness. The flu bug caught up with Amir Sims. He did not get to play in that loss at home to Notre Dame. They're happy to have him back tonight. Oh, they absolutely are. He is one of the more versatile players in the Atlantic Coast Conference. You can see here in their big win against Duke the numbers that he points up. But he's an outstanding passer. He's an outstanding scorer. And Tevin Mack is a guy, I think, who really has to perform well. Had a big game against Syracuse. The key there, he scored 32 points, only made one three-point basket. Sometimes he gets a little two three-point happen. It's not as if these teams have not had some signature wins. They have. The problem, they need more. And they need more in a hurry. It all starts tonight in game two of our doubleheader. Zoo is ready to go, and so are we. Take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by LS Tractor. Alamir Dawes is a freshman guard that can really stir the drink for you. Clyde Trapp along with Xavier Johnson, Trey McGowan's two really physical guards to go with a streaky on East Tony. And we touched on the middle of that pit lineup, how strong it can be. Up front, keep an eye on their bigs. Justin Champagny, of course, the real catalyst, as Dan mentioned at the top of the show. The opening tap is controlled to pit. Our officials for tonight's game, Lee Cassell, Brian O'Connell, and Mike Roberts. Thompson starts in the man-to-man, -man, and this is a tough assignment. The Pitt Panthers, particularly Johnson and McGowan's, big, strong guys who like to drive the ball. There's that drive that you were discussing from Xavier Johnson, and it's pulled away offensive board for Terrell Brown, another one of those guys that can uh, get physical with you in the painted area. Neither one of these teams is a particularly good three-point shooting team. Shot clock at one, and Tony pumps. It's an air ball, and it's taken out of the air after the violation. They'll trigger it back in. Sort of proves the point. One team hit shooting 32% in league play, and Clemson 29% from downtown. But they're just still going to take them. I mean, well, they are going to take them because Clemson, even though they shoot so poorly from beyond the arc in ACC play, they get 38% of their points from out there. Sims off the front rim. Pulled down by Xavier Johnson is they're really happy to have him back. They may have to massage his minutes somewhat because of the flu bug that hit him and cost him the game with Notre Dame. Really played well in the second half in the loss at Virginia in a game really where Clemson played a tremendous second half. They only had 14 points in the first 20 minutes. Outscored Virginia in that second half big time. But it wasn't enough, and they fell 51-44. to 44. Well, So far, the Clemson defense has been up to the test. The Panthers have not been able to get the ball inside to the basket in an easy fashion. Newman. Look at Sims' battle on the offensive glass. Almost got the tip to go through. Let's quickly get Dan, your local Ford dealer, Ford Keys, to this game. But for the Clemson Tigers, they've got to prevent Pitt from driving the ball to the basket, so they have to stay in front for the Panthers. They're not a very good three-point shooting team. They have to get steals and get out in transition. And a dribble handoff to Dawes, and Alamir can't get it to go. So early woes from the floor for Clemson. Terrell Brown corralling the rebound. But again, that's not a surprise. Clemson basically limited for three-point shooting so far. 
Jones. A little scoop to the hoop that went high off the window for Xavier Johnson. And now on the other end, the steal. Here comes Johnson the other way. He played two minutes, and it's nil-nil. There's an easy one. Terrell Brown. And the confetti flows from the zoo. And we're officially underway. For Clemson, you have to be careful. When you turn the ball over, that gives the Panthers a chance to get out and go. Clemson's defense is very, very good, but only if they can get it set. It's hard to play defense when you're chasing the other guys down the court. Trap off the pick. Adis Tony the rebound with the outlet to Johnson. Just incidental contact, no whistle on that drive. Beautiful work by Alamir Dawes. Well, he saw that back cut coming and got into the passing lane to knock it away. And this is a great job by Champagny and then a really good outlet pass by McGowan's. And Terrell Brown just runs down the court. That's what you want your big guy to do, just run from one basket to the other. Hey, reward him, right? Got to do that. Now, Sims, I think, got popped in the nose by accident, got taken out of the play. Oh, how about that? Dawes nearly with the pilfer. And on the top, up, that was a beautiful tap back by Sims to save that rebound for Clemson. Otherwise, Pitt would have had a third opportunity. And a mix-up. And an easy one for Pitt. And one. And just a bad idea by Newman. Just let that one go. Without any question, that's one you just let go. You don't want to give him a chance in a three-point play. But this is the second time that Clemson has turned the ball over and it's resulted in a pit basket. The only two pit scores have come in transition after turnovers. Not really surprised, though. The Panthers are among the top teams in the ACC at creating steals, although that was pretty easy. Yeah. Clemson is 0 for 5 with two turnovers. That wasn't so much a steal as the fact that Clemson threw the ball and nobody was looking. Yeah. Saw those numbers on Tony in that win against Duke. Easily the biggest of the year for Pitt. They also have beaten North Carolina. And of course, we know the Tar Heels are not what they once were, at least this season. But they'll take it. No one's brochure is going to be too sympathetic to sweeps over North Carolina this year in the ACC. That's a beautiful jump hook off of the baseline by Sims. He made a big one late to give Clemson a great opportunity at Virginia last week. Just like that over Huff. Now, Sims is not your prototypical back-to-the-basket center, but they've got to get him down inside, I think, in this game. He's got to be able to score in the lane. We will see some of Trey Jemison, the outstanding freshman who's got such size. He's... Uh, Coming off a really solid performance in that game when he had to start in place of Sims. At the buzzer, Champagny used some of the window and the iron, and it comes off to the Tigers. That wasn't so much a shot as a heave at the end of the shot clock, and that's what the Clemson defense can do when they don't turn it over and allow it to get set. Kevin Max has got to get himself involved, too, particularly driving the ball to the basket and scoring in the mid-range. Kramp has great quickness. Gets it inside the Sims in a post-up. And that's going to be a bump and a foul. First against Hamilton. Eric Hamilton. Ryan Murphy will make an appearance after some time away in protocol. When we come back. Five to two. Pitt with the early lead. And a happy birthday wish to Jeff Capel III. 45 years young today. No, his... Uh, Late father would be so proud of him. And on his birthday, Dan, a little bit of a present. He's got a sharpshooter back, Ryan Murphy, after missing three games due to concussion protocol. Well, he was hurt in one of the practices prior to the Miami game, and he said that he really got popped, that he can't remember anything about it. He doesn't know who hit him, doesn't know where he got, doesn't know where he was. So, uh, they obviously, they were very careful with that, and... Talked to him before the game. He said he feels just fine now. And he said as long as the ball goes in the basket, it would be perfect. Now, Jeff bemoaned to us at the shoot-around today that they were sorely banged up, as a lot of teams are this time of year. It's not unexpected. But without Murphy, they were reduced to going to their bench to walk-ons 
without him. So they really are happy to have him back. He can deliver some much-needed punts from the outside. There's Mack off the inbounds with an easy one. And that's where Tevin Mack should establish himself inside, Tim. He shoots 20% from beyond the three-point arc, and he shoots 66% from inside the arc. And he takes about the same number of shots from both places. So he ought to put that three-point shot in his pocket. Where, what happened to your diplomacy, by the way? ...is to the other side, so Pitt will get it. Gosh, you really get I know it's late in the season. Bonner's in uh, late season form here with uh, his critiques. The Clemson defense has been outstanding so far. We talked about all the things that Sims can do, and that's one of them. Mac plays the nylon song from downtown. Well, it's as if he was listening to you. Well, that Kevin means, Mack beginning to fire that away. That means now. he is now 17 for 78 from beyond the arc. <laughs> but he's one for one tonight. There you go. One for one tonight. And by the way, a 7 0 run for the Tigers. Murphy goes crossover. That late delivery was into some traffic and a turnover, the end result. Matt comes the other way. Hemingway, an outstanding shooter, had 16 and lost to Notre Dame. He needs some space to get his shot off, though. Goes with the ball fake here, and will take the two right on cue. This kid missed, gosh, months to finally get himself back after ankle problems. And he can help Clemson in the stretch run of this season. He really helped him on an overseas trip during the summer. And he was, Brad Ronell told us he was really starting to round into form when he hurt his ankle and really missed two months. Newman with a little touch foul. Brad Brownell at age 51, now in his 10th season, winning his coach in Clemson basketball history, passing Cliff Ellis. He got his team to the Sweet 16 not that long ago and has had some recent trips to the NCAA. But I think now this is a reconstruction process that he has underway. Alamir Dawes will go a long way in helping his team get the traction it needs and it's not as if they don't have moments they they do have them and i like the the win at carolina to get that, that monkey off their back and then beating duke at home right after that there's a three ball finally falling for pitts obvious tony the sophomore from huntsville alabama and again anytime you can get a three from basically anybody on the court you're thrilled to death whether you're clemson or pitt Inside Sims, he is a tough cover. I don't care who you put on him. Well, he's Clemson's best three-point shooter. He's a guy who can get to the basket. He's a great passer. A straight field goal. Up and under. Strong move. A physicality that Brownell was concerned with. In evidence there from Trey McGowan's. Now, McGowan's is a guy, he's just relentless. He's going to keep attacking the basket. Trap gives it up to Sims. On the wing again to Karin Scott. This one does not fall. Pulled down by Eric Hamilton. Now that basket didn't go, but that was some pass by sure was. Sims. Tigers by one. Not quite eight minutes gone by. Beautiful dish inside. Hamilton on the receiving end from the dive dropped by McGowan's. And that's two times in a row now that McGowan's has gotten past his man out on the perimeter. Once to score and the other time to draw the defense and create an easy shot. Pit by one. Trap off the pick. Count it. Pretty good guy to deliver the ball to and then get the pick from uh, Amir Sims to help set that shot up. Well, you combine nine of the last ten. Everyone's suddenly warming up for these two teams. After a sluggish start. Thompson has stayed in the man-to-man. -man. Now it's again with a jump stop. In traffic, really forced that one. Sims takes it out of there. On the wing, Tevin Mack. A Mack attack. And that's his second three of the game. Yes. So much for the... There were, already in social media, I was saying, oh, the... The ACC game that's on is the Iron on Kind Bowl. No, no, these guys are warming up from downtown. 
Again, a great delivery by Amir Sims. That was just an outstanding pass. McGowan's this time off the heel. Ripped down by Clyde Trent. If you're the Panthers, you're going to might have to adjust your defense a little bit here. Clemson, as we said, is not a team that makes a lot of threes, but if they're going to make them, you're going to have to adjust. And a foul in between. And Tevin Mack, you know, we said he shoots only 20% from beyond the arc in ACC play, but Tevin Mack is a guy who has really gotten going here for Clemson. A great pass by Sims. That's two threes for Tevin Mack. College Hoops is brought to you by Bojangles. Drop a big bow box on dinner tonight. Coyote Tractor. We dig dirt. And the Works Switch Driver. Two-in-one drill and driver. 17-12. to 12. Clemson. Sluggish out of the gates, but look at this, Dan. Seven of their last eight from the floor. Currently on a 6-0 run. And the pace of play... Really at a high level right now for both teams. It is, and one of the keys for Clemson is their offense has started to run through Sims. Sims scored a couple ba couple close to the basket. Then he has been the center of that offense in terms of making some really good passes that have led to easy opportunities. thought it was interesting hearing Brad Brownell express his concerns coming into the game tonight. He was concerned about the physical guards, Johnson and McGowan's, their ability to take his smaller backcourt down to the 10. And then Jeff Capel on his end, it was like oh, Amir Sims is just a really difficult matchup for us. Now Sims is going to get a bit of a blow and the youngster Trey Jamison is in for him now, number 55. But for both coaches, I think we've seen indicators already that their self-scouting was on target. Well, keep in mind, though, Tim, you mentioned it earlier that Sims missed the last game with the flu. And so he hadn't really done very much the last couple of days. So they're probably going to have to be careful with him. Absolutely. His conditioning may not be, his wind may not be exactly what it normally would be. Well, we've seen a lot of games where, you know, he might play 35-plus minutes. That's happened many times. Trey Jamison, though, to his credit, a raw talent is coming along. Clemson now, Clemson now goes to the zone. They basically got a three-guard lineup, and they're not confident, I think, that they can contain Pitt's dribble penetration. The balance up against the clock, and it's pulled out of there by Newman, who then throws it away. But now Brad Brownell was open. I was not Mac. happy that they threw the ball to him. Yeah, it was Mack rather than Newman, I beg your pardon. And, yeah, that's just one of those, hey, take your time, slow down. That's twice in this game that a Clemson Tiger has thrown the ball to yeah. nobody. Yeah, and, and that's, again, with young teams, when you're this deep into the season and yet at times the game is a little too fast for them, you can really see that's the sign of a young team that struggles with confidence as the season has been prolonged. Johnson fouled by Dawes. And one of the reasons, Tim, that you play a zone is you hope that you won't pick up those fouls. And the Pitt Panthers are a team, they score a lot of points from the free throw line. In fact, 21% of their points in ACC play comes from the line. They have to get to the line and convert. Xavier Johnson, 74% on the year. Now a word from Works Switch Driver. The Work Switch Driver. With two rotating chucks, you can switch between bits in a second and get projects done twice as fast. Dan is a handyman there in Stanton, Virginia. Uses that piece of apparatus often, I know. You're out there on the floor. I'll tell you what, if anybody's using Virginian. it, it's not me, it's my <laughs> wife. And Dan has a Terry at home just as I do. She's working hard on the farm while we're out of town. Now the Panthers in a little bit of his own defense here. Scott, Curran Scott knocks down the triple. The kid from Edmond, Oklahoma. It sounds uh, familiar. It should. That's a hometown that's near and dear to a number of sharpshooters of the past, including Mark Price of ACC fame. Oh, 
In traffic, Terrell Brown, and he gets the whistle. I think Jamison is going to pick that one up. Good pass on the inside, and Scott, in ACC play, he is a 30% three-point shooter, but good ball movement that time by the Clemson Tigers, and Jeff Capel's got to be scratching his head right now. Here, the Clemson Tigers come into the game in ACC play shooting 29% from beyond the arc, so you build your defense to force Clemson to shoot three-point baskets, yeah. and here they're making them. Yeah. So it might be back to the drawing board for... The Panthers, in terms of the strategy they're trying to employ. Such is life. Absolutely. And it's life this year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Really you just never know what's going to happen Dan, in any of these games. Dan, we were watching last night that game between Virginia and Notre Dame, and Braxton Key could not buy a bucket. He was an 18% three-point shooter and nailed four against Clemson in a game the Tigers could have easily won. The scouting report says give Braxton Key the shot, but if it falls, it falls. And sometimes the scouting report will belie the execution on a given night. Hemingway from way downtown. And this sharpshooter has got game, no question about it, from Newburgh, Indiana, Castle High School, coming off a career-high 16, 5 of 8, 4 of 7 from downtown in their last game with Notre Dame. 24 to 14, Clemson. Some fans from the great state of South Carolina and maybe those that made it into Pittsburgh. Or... But our big fans of the Tigers are on hand here tonight. And they're happy right at the moment. Yes, the they are. Tigers. This is a Clemson team that is an outstanding defensive team. Everybody will tell you that. And today they have been able to combine it in the first 11 and a half minutes of this half with some really sparkling offense. They're getting good shots. They're making the shots. And the Panthers really back on their heels. You mentioned last Panther field goal was at 12-10 uh, mark. So they've gone almost four minutes without a field goal. And Clemson in that time has gone on a 13-2 run. The other thing that you notice, Dan, they've been up against the clock a lot in these possessions. So the Tigers' zone has been really tight and not really providing any avenue for those dribble drives from those physical guards of theirs. A rare pass inside right there that did work. Tony found his man, Justin Champagny. So Champagny's the guy we talked about before the game, Tim. He can really be effective in there, but that's really about the first time he's handled the ball close to the basket. That is only his second field goal attempt. One of the first entry passes into the painted area we've seen all night. Lemieux Dawes operating. Beats Jemison. Good reach. Outstanding ball movement. Dawes off the back iron. Jemison with a follow. Short on it. Stays with it. Now he's tied up. The arrow is to pick. So it'll come back the other way. Couldn't have worked much harder than Jemison did. He just didn't get the ball to go in the basket. Really nice spin by Jemison to get himself open in there. Goes and gets his shot after he misses it and simply can't control the ball. He just needs a few more good outings. At his first career start, as we mentioned, due to the absence of Sims on Sunday. And young man that came out of Hoover, Alabama, Hoover High School in the Birmingham area, and has tremendous upside. He just needs to get a little more polish to his game and look out. All the physical tools are there. Bowens with a little show and go, giving it up to Terrell Brown. Here's Champagne, who just got that last bucket. That fadeaway is off the heel, tap out. Last touch by Trapp. That was a hard luck turnover there as the Tigers were fighting for that rebound. Almost had it. Once again, Tim, the Clemson defense forces the Panthers into a late shot clock opportunity. The Panthers have not been able to get out in transition. They've only gotten those three turnovers, and they were early. And when they got those turnovers, they scored. Shot clock again, down to five. And with Sims back in the ball game, Clemson has gone back to the man-to-man. -man. Brown, not there. Here comes Alameda Dawes. He can be a blur. Goes to the left hand and is fouled. 
challenging Trey McGowan's end to end that time. What you're seeing so far in this first half from the Clemson defense is they are allowing Pitt guys who aren't really good shooters to shoot the ball. That time Brad Brownell's defense cut off the drive to the basket and forced a pass out to Terrell Brown. Now he can make that jump shot, but he's the guy out there you'd rather have him shooting it than somebody else. Here's, here's a message from Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, a new way to experience golf in Myrtle Beach. Visit MyrtleBeachGolfTrail.com. That foul, by the way, was on Ryan Murphy, his first when he reached in. But the challenge was to McGowan's, and Alamir Dawes just decided, I'm taking it the length of the floor. Talk about Pitt needing to play in transition. Clemson has been out in transition a little bit more. Hunter Tyson in the game now for the first time. Number five in the Clemson Orange. And there's a three ball for Justin Champagny. Now, Champagny, he's also a guy who has struggled shooting the three, but he was three for four in that game against Georgia Tech. 25 to 19. A once 10 point lead down to six. Now, Pitt really needed that basket. And there's Sims back on the deck. Jemison sits. And he loses it. Great work by McGowan's numbers. Trey goes solo and is foul. Might be trapped that picks up the personal. If there's a turnover in the transition opportunity. And this is a situation where there's a triple team, basically, against McGowan's on the inside. So a great job cutting off the drive. But Champagny gets himself in an open position. Nice pass by McGowan's. Well, the early three-point story between these two teams. The Tigers lighting it up. Five of ten. They'll take that in any half's play. Well, again, in conference play, Tim, they come in shooting 29%. But you see, they make more than eight threes a game. So they rely heavily on the three. So even though they miss them, they're going to keep shooting them. But they haven't been missing them tonight. Curran Scott got the foul, his first. And the lead down to four for the Tigers. I think if you're Clemson, the ball's got to go into the hands of Amir Sims. Try to get him down on the block. Got it. Nice little slip, but he runs into a player control foul. It'll go against him. Excellent defense by McGowan sliding in there to take that charge, and it'll go the other way. And I think what Sims is telling Dawes is, hey, if everybody's around me, pass the ball to the corner. Pass the ball to where Sims was trying to pass it. I don't know about you, but at today's shoot-around, I was really impressed even when Sims was not practicing, and he was going to be limited because of, uh, you know, his, his stamina. He was talking. He was communicating. A sort of coach on the floor, if you will. Aaron Scott. It goes crying off the front iron. Xavier Johnson lost it. Good find to Terrell Brown. Sims went down on the court trying to get the ball. And when he wasn't able to recover it, that left Brown all alone. A 7 nothing run for Pitt. And Brownell gets a timeout. We talked about the Panthers being a team that likes to attack inside. Well, here you see an example of it. Johnson gets the ball in the lane, and when Sims can't get it, and Johnson recovers it, there's nobody there to guard Terrell Brown. This is what Johnson does. Powerful kid, recovers the ball, doesn't turn it, and finds his big teammate on the inside. Tim, and you mentioned it earlier, that each of these teams they have themselves in a position where they feel like they can start a run. But at this time of the year, the only thing you can do to help your cause is to win games. Of course, that helps your cause all year long. But <laughs> Well, the issue for teams that have records like these, one sub-500, one over-500, but in the league, struggling to get to the 500 spot or a little bit better, is you don't have the same opportunities to get quad one wins or even quad two wins as you would have had in past years in the ACC. So it's time for both of them to start winning, putting wins together. Clemson's lost three in a row. They gotta get off the side. This is a team that's playing with a sense of desperation 
And you see the nice follow there by their star player, Amir Sims. That was almost a pass. I think Trapp knew that Sims was over there. I'm and with he you. was going to throw the ball up there. If it went in, fine. But if not, he knew Sims was going to get that rebound. Yeah. Sometimes two listen. guys were covering him, so he knew nobody was on Sims. No question. Johnson feeds Champagne. Goes and gets it himself and draws the contact and the foul. Is that a hard luck foul on Sims? I believe it may be. Yep, Amir gets his second seat. That's a problem. He's got two now with 4-11 to play, and Brad may have to take a look at getting him out of there. And that's a foul. It was a hard luck foul, but it's it was. created by Champagne and his hustle. Be interesting to see if Brownell has confidence. Listen, he's got a high basketball IQ. Amir could play with two, knowing that he's got to be careful. But it is a bit of a roll of the dice to keep him in there that long with the way he plays. The ball will attract a lot of attention, and he generally gets it. He's got it now. now he can be careful on the defensive end. The danger is picking up an offensive foul. Yeah. Aaron Scott goes inside, draws the contact, and a whistle. Clemson was once up 10. It's been whittled to three here at Pitt. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota. Let's go places. And Husqvarna. All-star lawns start with auto mower. After a slow start, the Clemson Tigers got it going offensively. And it was the two guys we talked about before the game, Tevin Mack and Amir Sims, doing most of the damage. Mack, surprisingly, from the three-point range. And Amir Sims, he's done everything you can ask a player to do. He's done a great job passing the ball. He's scored inside. He's had offensive rebounds. There you can see, uh, obviously, Mack and Sims with 15 points, six out of eight shooting. The rest of the team, not so good. Mack averaging just over 12 per game. Amir Sims on the bench with those two fouls. He's got six points. He's got three rebounds. He's got two assists, and he's got a steal. I mean, he's just everywhere. And uh, out of the timeout, obviously good to get him on the bench to preserve him, not only for his physical well-being coming off the flu bug. It was a bad flu bug. In two days, he lost nine pounds. So that was one whale of a bad stomach flu. I'm sure a number of people that are watching us tonight can relate to that this time of year when it's going around. And again, Sims out of the game. Jemison in, so Clemson goes to the zone. Xavier Johnson got his man airborne, but when he did, picked up his pivot foot and walked. That's five turnovers committed now by the Panthers. And Xavier Johnson has yet to score a field goal in this game. Clemson's defense has done a really nice job cutting him off. Nor does he have... Well, he's got, actually he's got two assists in the game. Yeah. That zone, that 2-3 has been really tight, man, and they've not been able to find any cracks to get close on the dribble drive, which was what Brownell was emphasizing today in practice. And there is a reach-in foul spotted by Lucas L. That'll go against McGowan's his first. Well, that's a break for Clemson because Dawes took that ball into trouble. <laughs> he did. Coaches tell you all the time, don't dribble into trouble, don't pass into trouble. And McGowan's, of course, one of the top steals guys in the ACC. Very nearly had another one, but picked up the foul. Dawes trap. Jemison Scott. And Mack, the five on the floor for the Tigers. Well, you got to figure Mack is the scorer with this line. Too strong. Jemison was in position, but the long rebound carried to Johnson. McGowan speeds Johnson with two man game in the backcourt, but alas, the iron unkind. And it's pulled down by the Tigers. 29 24. Scott needs help, and he's going to get a three second call. We got a walk instead. Once he decided he wasn't going to shoot the ball, and Champagne got out on him very quickly. 
that pump fake, yes, he's able to get his head and shoulders around Champagne. Yeah. But Champagne's about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, There's no way Scott is going to get a shot up with Champagne that close. Yeah, unless you're Steve Nash, you're not really comfortable in that spot in the lane. And I think he, he was counting to himself and then walked as a result. There's a turnover. Uh, these Tony just hurried that one. A little gnashing of teeth for the birthday boy, Jeff Capel, over that one. What you have to do is catch that ball and then make the pass. You don't have to try to make that touch pass. And Jeff Capel has seen his Panthers climb back in the game, and now they've made a couple of mistakes. Well, think about this, Dan. They're down five with just over two to play in the half, and their, their guards collectively are three out of 13 from the floor. To your point about Clemson's defense being tight and not allowing the dribble penetration that they're accustomed to. Shot clock down to 10. That ball deflected by Tony. Knocked away so they'll get an extra few seconds on that clock and recycle it back to 20. That's kicked by Tony, so that's a tough break for the Panthers because on that kick ball, the shot clock resets to 20. Tim still sitting. So Jamison is out there and trying to set this high pick. In fact, he takes it, gives it up to Moore. Just into the game. Look at Jamison Sky. Comes away with another one. And out to Hemingway for three. And that's the guy you want shooting the three. Boy, oh boy. How about that offensive rebound by Trey Jamison to get it out to Hemingway? Two guys that were really not, not a factor a month ago for this team helping the Tigers off the bench. There's a bump and a foul given up by Kayvon Moore. Well, Hemingway, that's the stereotype, isn't it? The shooter from Indiana? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's almost a cliche in basketball. <laughs> but a great rebound and a really good quick pass to get the ball to Hemingway. That rebound came out, and rather than have the ball stick, that was Dawes who caught the ball and immediately found his open teammate. Yeah, it was just excellent work by Trey Jennison to understand where his shooter and teammate was. 82 to 24, the lead back to eight. After that run by Pitt that closed that 10-point lead down to three. There's a rejection by Champagne. That's just a great job by Champagne to follow the play and not give up on it. Eight turnovers for the Tigers now. Beautiful dish. Reversal, everything but the finish for Eric Hamilton. That was a wonderful time drop by McGowans, but could not get the finish. But Jemison wants it. A little quick with that jump hook. Raised that's a good jump hook. That's, that's, Tim, I think that quick shot is exactly what he needed. When you're open in there, you need to be able to shoot the ball. He just short on it a little bit. Yeah. Hit no points in the last four minutes, so another drop for them. A hoop here could really help them going in for the intermission. Here's that zone again. Into traffic. Boy, it's been outstanding, that defense, hasn't it? Outstanding for Clemson. That is a tight 2-3. Well, coming up at halftime, Dan and I will have ACC scores, including a report from the BC Miami game. Evan Leppler and the G-Man had that one earlier tonight. We'll have our Toyota Driven feature, a sit-down with Jeff Capel. He's having a birthday. His 45th tonight. First half highlights and more, so you stay right where you are. Our action in the ACC continues on this doubleheader night. Thirty-two to twenty-four, our score. Here's a look at our principal financial game plan. Now for Brad Brownell, his team, he needs his team to do the same thing on defense that they did in the first half. And Jeff Capel, he's got to figure out a way to get his guys rolling here offensively in the second half. That's our principal financial group game plan. And Tim, you know, sometimes the team gets going offensively by tightening up on the defensive end. I think the Panthers really need to do a better job of creating some turnovers and getting out in transition. 
They also need to do a better job on the defensive boards. A Clemson team that is not a great offensive rebounding team had six offensive rebounds in that first half. Sims is back on the floor with the two fouls to open. Kevin Mack. He's telling everybody to clear out of his yeah, way. Yeah, he is. Knew he had a mismatch. Going to wind up being bailed out with the foul. That was a pretty tough cover, and he knew it. Champagny comes to try to help, but he's a little late. See, Mack waves everybody off, and Champagny realizes now it's a mismatch. And all Champagny has to do is wait till he goes up to the shot and block it from behind. But he picked up that foul by reaching in. Yep, that's just his first, however. And Matt comes up empty at the free throw line. Well, he's not a great free throw shooter, Matt. Only about 60% in conference play. It's the second. And the lead is up to nine. Just underway second half. Here and comes him with that 2-2-1 pressure. That we saw a little bit in the first half. They're not really trying to steal the ball. Just trying to force the Panthers to work some time off the clock. And now Sims with those two personal fouls. Clemson stays in the zone that has been very effective for him. Johnson not to be in the long rebound by Alamir Dawes. What we saw in the first half was Clemson in the man-to-man -man with Sims in the game. But again, he's got those two fouls. There's the dump down. It all starts here. Sims, great read. Feeds Dawes out to Newman. That was just great basketball right there. Ball moved quickly. And the great passing began with Amir Sims. 36 to 24. Boy, Clemson's offense just runs so much more smoothly than they can run it through Amir Sims. No question. A lot of credit to Dawes to get rid of that ball quickly, but Sims started the whole thing. And every now and then you see a play that just looks like a clinic, and that was it from Clemson. Johnson, a pull-up. Off the front rim, does come away with a loose ball. Champagny coming in, and that's an offensive foul. He's upset with himself. Needs to be careful to slam the ball down. Well, the guy you want to watch here is Amir Sims, and what he's going to do is he catches the ball. Dawes is going to go to the corner, and that's going to create the opening out here. And watch as this play develops. He senses the backdoor cut on the double team. Newman gets himself in great position. And again, Clemson gets themselves a three-point shot, and they make it. They've been making a very high percentage tonight, something they don't normally do in conference play. Now, when you see that kind of passing and cutting, it's very impressive. Trap. Nice little lob into Amir Sims, and he feeds... Mack, who nails another tray, and just like that, this lead is catapulted to 15 and forces the hand of Jeff Capel for a timeout. Just over two, two minutes gone by, and the Tigers have brought it tonight on the road. Clemson Tigers have jumped out to their biggest lead of the game here based on the passing of Amir Sims in the shooting, first of Johnny Newman the third, and then of Tevin Mack. Mack with his third three-point basket of the game. Look at those numbers from Mack and Sims. And frankly, when those two are hitting on all cylinders, it makes life a lot easier for the rest of the team to play their complementary roles. The lead up to 15 now. Pitt's got some making up to do, and the two guards who are responsible for so much of what they accomplished going to the rim have been negated by this really tight zone defense. Forcing up those kinds of shots. Guns and boxing out well and getting the job done on the glass. That one pulled away by John Newman. Ryan Murphy's back on the floor. They're going to look to see if he can loosen that zone up with some three-ball efficiency. Number 24 in the dark jersey. Sims up against the clock. Walk. Actually slid a little bit, so the court monster got him. He was well aware of it, and it'll go the other way. Had he been able to get stopped, he was in perfect position to come back to his left hand. And he's very good with either hand down on the inside. Dan, from the end of the first half to the opening moments of the second, 
Pitt has no field goals in eight minutes of real time in this game. Here's McGowan's. Not to be, and Newman takes down the long rebound. Well, at the moment, they're settling for shots. You have to get the ball inside that zone, not necessarily to score in there, but to force the zone to collapse and get some easier off. The foul will go against Champagny, I believe, and that's two. No, count three on Champagny. He got a giveaway late in the half, you might recall. That is bad news for Pitt. And a really touch foul that time for him. He's very upset about it. I don't know that his hands went straight up. He's claiming that they did. But that being a third foul, losing him at this stage, down this much, very tough on Pitt. But once again, it's the Clemson offense that's putting the pressure on the Pitt defense. Clemson doing an excellent job passing the ball. And, of course, it always helps. You make the passes and the ball goes in the basket at the end. The game is much easier when the ball's going in the basket, and it's pretty easy for Clemson right now. Clemson 1-6 and six on the season on the road. And a lot of people probably, including them, are like, okay, how do we handle this? Being up 16 in league play with this much time remaining in the second half. It's been a while. High arching off the window, Terrell Brown. And that's the first hoop of the half and the first in just about nine minutes of playing time. Pitt had seven consecutive misses from the floor. The lead down to 14. And now they've got to use their defense to get themselves back in the game. Ted Jensen really playing a strong complementary role. That's a beautiful reversal. Everything but the finish from Matt. And it's pulled down by Terrell Brown. And if you're the Panthers, you really have to take this ball and push it quickly up the court. But nice job by Clemson. Get back on defense. Look at that defensive work. Into the passing lane and getting the job done defensively. Clyde Trapp and company. He and Tevin Mack have really been active inside for Clemson. Amir Dawes. Trap walk. Timeout. Couple of turnovers. Really the only problem for Clemson. Those occasional unforced errors. But they are lighting it up. This is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold. Be confident. Live fearless. And CPI Security. been a frustrating second half so far for the Pitt Panthers, and one of the reasons, they're actually settling for a lot of shots behind the arc. Champagny misses that one. Here's Trey McGowan. He's, he's open out there. But again, Clemson is playing that zone. They're daring the Panthers to shoot the ball. The Panthers have gotten some open looks. They simply haven't been able to convert. You see six points, one of 12 shooting, four turnovers between those two guards, which were the focus of Brad Brownell and his scouting report to his team today. And this uh, very tight and successful 2-3 zone has paid dividends for them and not allowing those lanes that McGowan's and company love to, to drive. There's, there's the free ball that finally comes in. Drum Gould puts it through. Tim, and that's exactly what we're talking about. You get inside the zone. That time with the dribble, you kick it back out for the three-point shot. Carroll just into the game and just into the scoring column. Alamir Dawes with a counter. Uh, it's got to be very frustrating for the Pitt Panthers because Dawes is another one of those guys. Can he shoot the three? Absolutely he can. But coming into this game, 29% in ACC competition. Brown, Hamdul trying to keep it alive. I think he may have been pushed there. He was by Clyde Trapp. Drumgul very active since he came into the game for Champagny. And Terrell Brown, again, he's a guy who can shoot that facing jump shot, and that shot is within his range. It just didn't go. We talked about Drumgul. He's been very aggressive since his entry into the game. He hit that three. Now he's got a chance for two more. 
Now a word from Bojangles. Say good morning and mean it with two hefty, zesty Bojangles sausage biscuits. It's bow time. Take a look at uh, this young man. Rochester, New York. The Panthers are not going to have much success in any game where Johnson and McGowan's are combined one for 12. No. That is just not a formula for pit success. They've got to find a way to get out of their funk. Inside, Jamison stays with it. Strong move there right over Terrell Brown. Dawes was a little late getting him the ball, but Jamison didn't panic. Didn't get over anxious. Really nice play. Clemson doing a great job communicating with one another in this zone defense. And the Panthers actually doing a little bit of standing around. And that's the purpose of the zone. It wants to make a team based on movement stand a little bit. And Brown's shot won't fall. Pulled down by Mack. Brown needs to get himself into the lane for the 6-8 to eight foot jump shot rather than the 18 foot jump shot. Dawes again. Hello, how do you do? These guys are shooting the lights out now and are up 19 with under 13 minutes left. This is now an 8-0 run in the last 140. Johnson rejected. Gonna get a foul out of it, though. Jamison still feeling awfully good about himself, and he should be. But right, Jamison, he's open on the inside. They don't see him for a second, but he does a great job catching the ball, maintaining his pivot foot, and then powering it up to the basket. And this time, Dawes, he's open. That's not a very good pass, but he just gets himself set, shoots the ball with some confidence. And the Clemson Tigers, that certainly talks about everybody on that team. Shooting the ball with confidence. Second foul on Jemison. It goes back to its uh, starters. Champagne with three. It's go time now for Pitt. They got to find a way. So Eric Hamilton and Champagne are back on the deck, which should tell you that at 48 30 and this much time remaining, the time is now for Pitt to start making a run. Panthers showing some pressure. Remember, Justin Champagne is out there with three fouls. And at this stage, you can understand why Capel's got him back out there. The ball deflected and tapped out by Murphy. Saved to Sims, only three to shoot. And Amir with a nice pass up against the clock to Mac. That's all Amir Sims, all effort by that uh, outstanding Clemson Tiger. 16 for Mack. But Amir Sims made that play. Now Ryan Murphy tried to tip it out to his teammate, but the tip didn't go far enough. It was outstanding defense from Pitt. Tom McGowan sits a triple. And that'll help the Pitt cause. We showed you on that setter, on that replay where they missed some shots, and some of them were wide open. That was actually a little bit contested. That was the first pick field goal in three minutes. Dawes. Murphy, smallest guy on the floor, comes down with it. And a quick outlet to Xavier Johnson. McGowan spots up again. Nothing wrong with that shot. No, I like the idea. Great play by Murphy. It's suspended in midair. Saves it by throwing it off the shin of Hemingway. Well, uh, Tevin Mack, we've seen him make twos, but again, Amir Sims with the great pass, and Mack able to finish at the end of the clock. ECC College Hoops is brought to you by your local Ford dealer and LS Tractor. Visit us at lstractorusa.com. Time now for Toyota Let's Go Places. 50 to 34 our score. Let's go to the zoo, Dan Bonner. <laughs> the Oakland Zoo. Well, we go from the Carnegie Museum to the Oakland <laughs> Zoo. Uh, this is one of the great atmospheres in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let me, let me say this. I went places today. I went places after you and I had lunch. 
at Lisbon Company and our friend E.J. Borghetti, who's out of town, always gracious host to us. And we all had uh, lunch at the porch, and then I went on to Forbes Field. I had never seen the wall left from Forbes Field, and even home plate got a chance to see that, and then visited my old friend Dino Cook's uh, gravesite. With the help of uh, the author of his upcoming book, John Lucas, a look back at the great Dino Cook. At the buzzer, wonderful pass inside to Tony to make it a 50-36 to 36 game. And that's a, that's a really good play by Xavier Johnson to get the ball in the zone, to not allow himself to be denied that entry. Hunter Tyson with a little give and go. Went a little too deep that time. And the play disrupted. And Champini tries to answer and is fouled on the putback. And that sequence that you saw right there, Tim, is the sequence of events that's going to get picked back in this game. You get a stop on the defensive end. That was a close shot by Tyson, but not a particularly good shot because it was heavily contested. And when you take a shot like that, that allows your opponent to get out and go. And the Panthers with the opportunity to convert from the line. But you play defense, you get a transition opportunity. That's a four minute for a comeback. And this young man from Brooklyn, New York, out of Bishop Laughlin, at 30 against Georgia Tech over the weekend. All that in 39 minutes. By the way, Georgia Tech did beat Louisville 64 to 58. So a huge win for Josh Pazner's club, who was close. And they almost uh, took out Louisville before. They've been very close. Alvarado led the way for 18 points in that performance. So the Yellow Jackets looking to emerge. Well, clearly a really good, in the middle. Clearly a good defensive effort by Georgia Tech. That is an offensively potent Louisville team. To hold them to 58 points is really an accomplishment. I mean, they scored 80 against Virginia. They did. Hamilton is playing with three now, drawing Sims. That three ball does not go for Clyde Trapp. Length of the floor. Rejected by Trapp, but a foul. Boy, and Trapp Sam needs Penny to be careful. Be yes, he does need to be careful. Last thing you want is a technical foul in yeah. that situation. The heck of a defensive play, but I think he got him with the body, too. He did, clearly. But when you go up to block a shot like that, Tim, and you swing your arm that hard, you're yeah. going to get a foul called every time. And he's just fortunate he didn't get a technical. Yes, he is. And I thought Champagny was a little earlier when after he picked up a foul, he slammed the ball down to the floor. I give these uh, officials some credit. Brian O'Connell's been around a long time. Not the first rodeo for Mike Roberts or Lee Cassell either. They're not giving the technical. They know the emotions are running high. An eight-nothing run now for Pittsburgh. Fans not happy with that whistle. It goes against Audis Tony, his first. Well, Tony ran into the screen of Amir Sims and stumbled and committed the foul. You have to call that. Yep. Uh, it's a contact that got him an advantage. Great anticipation there by Xavier Johnson. Hamilton loses it on the other end, regathers. Count it. But you got to wonder what Hamilton was thinking about. Give up the ball, buddy. He's lucky he didn't get himself a charging foul. Clemson's going to get a timeout because here come the Panthers. Oh, let the zoo have some fun, will you? About the Pitt Panthers uh, using the defense to offense formula. And here Hamilton, he's really lucky that he's able to keep control of the ball and get it to go in the basket. That was a great steal by Johnson. That's a walk. Not what Brownell wanted out of the timeout. There are times when you can just see the game speed up on this young Tigers team. And uh, with this push coming from the home squad, not uncommon. What is uncommon is for Clemson to have had a lead as large as they did. And they've gotten all the way up to 18. And now they're trying to hold on with nine minutes left. Pull up. Roll the iron, really unkind. Downright rude. Knocked away by Johnson. It'll be out of bounds to Clemson. 
And that's exactly the kind of shot that the Pitt Panthers want. Xavier Johnson, really good patience. Ball moved around the zone a couple times before he tried to drive. And he got exactly where he wanted to go, just couldn't get it to go down. Clemson had hit four straight. Then their last five possessions, three misses and two turnovers. This is a big sequence for them offensively. Even up nine. Sims has to handle the ball. Yeah. Whether he shoots it or not, you've got to put the ball in his hands. And offensive foul. Offensive foul, yep. And again, sometimes they get a little fast. Five trap, just too quick right there. Uh, Tim, I don't know that it was too quick. He had a lane to the basket, but it's a classic mistake. Get in there, jump, stop. You jump up in the air, particularly if you're jumping up in the air to pass the ball. You're looking for trouble, and he found it. Trapp and Scott leave the game. Hemingway has come back onto the floor, along with Newman, Dawes, Mack, and Sims. Jackson with a double clutch. That's a, I believe they called that an offensive foul. Yeah, they did. And Sims smartly made sure he was in the right location to collect it. Because it would have been a fourth foul on him had it gone against him. That's a huge whistle for Clemson. Uh, so you're picked. You've had a couple of chances. You're not going to score every time. you got to continue to dig in on defense. That's where the ball has to go. Sims working on Hamilton. Too strong. And lost out of bounds by Matt. So some empty trips of late for Clemson. Six consecutive possessions with no scoring. And the Panthers' run continues. Here's our game summary, Dan. Uh, Clemson, for the most part, has shot the ball extremely well. They've made 10 three-point field goals. That's two more than their average. The Panthers have struggled a little bit. See, Xavier Johnson, 0 for 7, shooting the ball. And if Xavier Johnson is going to shoot the ball like that, that usually means trouble for Pitt. But the Panthers are still in this one. And some of those shots that were falling early for Clemson are now no longer falling. And I think because of that large lead, and having to deal with it for the first time in quite a while on the road. You know, these are uncharted waters for them. They settled back into this 2-3 zone. They've been very effective. They played mostly man-to-man -man in the first half with some of the zone, but the zone worked very successfully, and they played almost exclusively this zone here in the second. Late cut and bump by Tevin Mack. And he'll get the foul. Just his first. Panthers, during this little run of theirs, Tim, they've been able to get the ball a little bit, do a little bit better job getting the ball inside of that zone. Both teams will go to the bonus one and one and now on the, the next foul. Now the Tigers are in a man-to-man. -man. Each team with six team fouls, so one and one time in the next common foul. Champagne. Well, Justin now. Getting in sync, he's up to 11, 50 to 43. And trying to bring another foul. Now Xavier Johnson trying to be very aggressive, yes, almost has a steal, but instead he picks up the foul. That's his second personal foul. I think they are smelling Clemson's anxiety, Dan, by going full court, kind of forcing the pace of play to go faster than the Tigers would like. Tim, I don't know that, that Clemson has any particular anxiety, but Pitt certainly knows they have to turn up the heat. Yeah. And that's what they've been doing. Well, that ends a five-minute drop, which can certainly lead to anxiety <laughs> when you've gone five minutes without any points. And certainly helps. One out of two there, so it's 51 to 43. Johnson, patented move into the painted area, and he'll induce the foul again. And that's he, Alex he, Hemingway that gets the foul. Now he got the foul on that play, but Pitt has had more success when Johnson has tried that penetration after a couple of passes, forced the defense to move a little bit, and then try that penetration. Shooter's touch for the 74%. 
Free throw shooter at the line, Xavier Johnson. He's made all five of his free throw attempts today. One of three ACC players averaging at least 10 points, three and a half boards, five assists per game. Joining Duke's Trey Jones and NC State's Markel Jackson, who really had a great game at Syracuse the other night. Well, keep in mind that Xavier Johnson led the ACC in free throws made last year. Made 157 of them. Made all six of his attempts tonight. And he's down to six. Sims off a beautiful pass on the drive by Alamir Dawes. He's their future. Clemson's got a bright future with him at the point. Something they've been missing in recent years. A prolific point guard. McGowan's off the heel. Tough luck bounce. That follow won't go. Hamilton stays with it. And it's finally recovered by Newman. Boy, you've got to finish that play. That was a big missed opportunity for Yes, him. yes it was. Dawes kind of feels it. He's a big time, big moment kind of kid. The Patrick School, Newark, New Jersey. He's got 10. He knows when to turn it up. Highly recruited, four star, coming out of high school. One of the most celebrated recruits, really, that Brownell's gotten in recent memory. Reed is back to 10. Cam Penny off the front iron and the long rebound taken out of there by Newman. That ball never went inside the three-point arc, Tim. That's a hard way for Tripp to have success. Dawes working on McGowan, splits the double. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Again, another great move by Xavier Johnson to get in position to pick up the player control foul. Uh, the Clemson Tigers have done a great job passing the ball, and that's just a simple screen, and Sims follows the play, and Dawes, he feels the pressure, just pulls up and shoots the jump shot. Again, Sims is in the middle of that, setting the screen. You have to pay so much attention to Amir Sims, you give Amir, you give Alamir Dawes some room. Audis Tony back on the floor with McGowans, Johnson, Terrell Brown, and Champagny. That's pretty good ball movement. Terrell Brown seems surprised to get that pass. That's rejected by Tevin Mack with nine on the shot clock. That's a, that's a play that Terrell Brown, when he catches the ball there, he's got to be ready to shoot it. Well, they're going to get another whistle on Newman. Got a little bit of the arm that time. Well, John Newman the third had a couple of tough plays early in the first half, and Brad Brownell took him out. He only played six minutes in the first half, and Newman has been very, very active and aggressive throughout this entire second half, been trying to make up for that. Very active on the board. You're right. Aldis Tony at the free throw line. Had that career high 27 at Duke. Led the Trinity Christian in North Carolina to the single A state title as a senior. 55 47. Comes in by eight. And you've got to disrupt Clemson here somewhere. Dawes for three. Oh, wow. here, Dawes. He's, I'm telling you, he's one of those guys that when the game is on the line, there's nothing reluctant about his willingness to take taking the shot. The big shot is something he wants. The lead back up to double digits. Hey, runner, runner, runner. Is there another run in pick? Well, if there is, they got to get run. Hey. That zone has just been tight. Uh, Clemson's defense, Tim, has been very good, but the key to this game has been their ability to knock down the three points. Absolutely. Yep. There's an old line that you said, no matter how good the D is, if it doesn't go through the hoop, you're not going to get many W's. Dawes knows how to put it through the hoop.
you by CPI Security, Dan. Well, here you see Justin Champagny with a blocked shot, and the Panthers' problem really hasn't been protecting the paint. It's the, been the fact that uh, Clemson has done an outstanding job shooting the three. Yep. Eleven made three-point baskets for the Tigers tonight. They're high. They made 15 against North Carolina back on January the 30th. The game that ended the 0 for 59. Got that uh, monkey off the program's back. If not this year, win. So that was a, a great one to get. And of course, they followed that up with the home win against Duke. They could really build off of this road win, provided they can hold on and get it. 60 to 47, the lead back to 13. Clemson has just made the Panthers work for every opportunity. There's not a lot of easy chances for Pitt, and generally when that happens, you have a tough time scoring. Right now, with, given the margin of the game, you've got to try to take some chances on defense if you're the Panthers. Dawes getting a good look again. This time halfway down the center there now, but a recycle off the offensive rebound by Newman, who, as you mentioned, has played with a lot of energy in the second half. And a chance was taken, but a foul by Audis Tony. Well, I mentioned, you know, beating North Carolina and Duke in back-to-back -back games. Last time that happened was 1990. Of course, that was one of Clemson's great teams that particular year. They were 0 for 59 at Chapel Hill, but then came the huge win against Duke. Sims a career high 25. I mean that that 1990 Tigers team was an incredible one that won the regular season title, the first in 67 ACC seasons. And that just uh, tells you something about the potential this young team has. But life on the road for a young team can be difficult. They're looking for just their second road win of this season. I saw Amir Sims there at half court. I don't know what music's playing in his head, but he's really enjoying it. <laughs> Pitt's last field goal, Dan, came at the 7-18 mark. So they've hit those uh, the skids and the stone-cold sequence at the wrong time, missing seven straight. They had an eight-minute drought, you might recall, in field goals a little earlier in the game. Tim, for the Clemson Tigers, the big offensive numbers have been put up by Tevin Mack. He's got 16. Alamir Dawes has 13. But I, the key to this whole thing, to my mind, has been Amir Sims. Yes. You know, I, I mean, he's only he's got eight points. He's got four rebounds. He's got five assists. But it's just his general presence out on the court. He's always talking to his teammates. He's always encouraging. Yeah, they feed off him, no question. He is a leader. It's very rare you see a big man that is as big of a verbal leader as he is. But he really is a point center in a lot of respects. Here he is with the clock winding down, drawing the foul from Terrell Brown. He makes great decisions. You know, you see, you see that in his passing, but at that time he let everybody go by and then just spins to the basket against Terrell Brown, an opponent that he might have to have a tough time challenging if yeah. he's right next to the well, basket, but a few feet from the basket, he can spin around it. Well, he's played on large stages. You know, at World University Games, he led uh, the United States team, Clemson, to the gold medal by averaging 15.2 and 9.8 boards, so almost averaged a double-double. Scored 12 in the gold medal game against Ukraine. Started all 34 games a season ago. Safe to say they, if they had had him against Notre Dame in their last outing, things might have been different. Well, they might have been different, yep. Tim. But again, you just never know what's going to happen from game to game in this conference. Well, in basketball, yeah. that was basketball this year. No doubt about it. It's like a twilight zone season in so many respects. Xavier Johnson trying to follow it. And Max going to pick up another one of those hard luck. Wrong place, wrong time. Personal fouls, it appears. And Xavier Johnson is the guy who fouled. Johnson missed that <laughs> shot, went right after it. Yep. 
I think Brad is saying to himself, please just don't stop the clock, will you? 213 remaining. Coming in three games under 500 at 5 and 8 in the league, 11 and 12 overall. Louisville coming up next. Now, Louisville will be smarting coming off the loss to Georgia Tech. But these are, are winnable games, and those quad one opportunities, there aren't many. Louisville's one, Florida State is another. And that's the thing that makes it so dicey for these teams in the middle of the pack in the ACC. We've seen some significant signs. North Carolina State with that big win against Syracuse on the road the other night. Now, Georgia Tech with uh, tonight's win against Louisville. There's still opportunities for a couple of teams maybe to work their way in off of being outside the bubble to within the bubble. But, Tim, I, I got a news flash for you. Here it is. It's uh, We're in the middle of February. Nobody has made the NCAA tournament. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So teams still have an opportunity yeah. to play their way in. Yeah. It's an excellent point. That's the third foul on McGowan's. It'll go the other way. You know, one of the fun things that we do in college basketball. McGowan, again, he's trying to force it, but that Clemson defense has been solid all night long. One of the fun things we do in college basketball is talk about all this bracket business and who's in and who's out and who's on the bubble. And it's just all, it's a total invention. And it's fun and it, it piques interest in college basketball. But nobody is in at this point. Right. Here's McGowan's. And the problems continue. They are now McGowan's and Johnson. They collected two of 20 now from the floor. And as you said, that's a recipe for defeat for Pitt every time. Brad Brownell wanted to spread the floor, use some of the clock with each possession. And a guy like Sims with his ability to handle the ball and play away from the basket, it makes him a... Very tough matchup, particularly in a situation like this. Give Clemson another guy who can hang on to the ball, and Jeff Capel and his staff, not a lot they can do right at the moment. I got to tell you, I love that feature piece at halftime on Jeff when he was talking about family, why you get into coaching. You know, he had a great experience at Oklahoma, got them all the way to the Elite Eight. Things didn't end well for him there, but he went back and uh, went back to his alma mater with Coach K, rebooted his career. And I think that the outlook here and the fit for him, especially with his brother Jason by his side on the staff, is outstanding for the future. If they can hold on to some of these young players and continue to recruit well, this facility, we've seen it. Even tonight, and it wasn't their best night playing, but the, the environment here is just outstanding. Nice reversal as Champagne feeds Eric Hamilton for the slam. Hamilton, I think, turned his ankle yeah. after that dunk. That kind of sums up the night, doesn't it? Boy, it sure does. Mm. He's in some pain, too. Good pass by Champagne and Hamilton doing a nice job getting to the basket. But as he comes down, I just think he turns his ankle. Yeah, and it was he, he was protecting himself by holding the rim, and the officials correctly didn't blow a whistle. Came down nonchalantly. Oh, he came down on the ball. On the ball. Oh my, that's just. What a tough break. Well, that is just such a shame that that would happen. He did not anticipate that. Take a look now at a big bow moment. Well, the three-point baskets have certainly been the bow big moments in this game for the Clemson Tigers. We mentioned they came in shooting 29% in ACC play but they've been 11 for 20 in the game today. And by making those shots, combining that with their tremendous defensive effort, that is that is a great formula for victory for the Clemson Tigers. They could really, this could be one of those points in a season, Dan, where Brad Brownell captures some lightning in a bottle. Now that's the season number, yep. Tim. That's But I, what I've been talking about the entire game is ACC play. Yep. And we are in for the Clemson Tigers. We're in their third, 14th ACC game. So I think those numbers are, are yeah. a little bit better. But 29% in ACC games. And here they come in and they're over 50%. In this half alone, Clemson shooting at a 53% clip. Hit only 28%. The 
Panthers have really struggled. They couldn't get inside that Clemson defense, whether it be the man-to-man -man or the zone. And of course, they make another one. How about the big shots Alamir Dawes made when they were challenged by Pitt in the second half? He's when, been outstanding. When Pitt made that run, Dawes is the guy. It was Sims and Mack in the first half, and Dawes certainly is the guy that made big contributions in the second half. And Tim, I'll tell you, another guy who made some big contributions in that first <laughs> half was Alex Hemingway. Yeah, Again, sure he comes in and makes some baskets. Well, Dawes comes out of the game with 18, just one short of his career high, 19. That uh, maneuver by Samson George, he will get to the free throw line as a result as some whole well, each team has cleared have been their made. bench. They've all cleared their benches. Paul Grindy is on the floor for the first time. And there's the upcoming schedule at Virginia Tech. This is tough. Losing a game at home before two road games. And Virginia Tech's not going to be in a good mood when they get there. And Florida State, the eighth-ranked team in the country, a tough out in Tallahassee. 69-52. So yet another example to notify. The smorgasbord of college basketball. You just don't know what to expect game in and game out. And in many cases, the coach don't know either. They have no idea either. Of course, Fox knocks, three point knocks it down. Parker Fox, sophomore from Reno, Nevada. Oconee High School in Georgia with the triple. That's the 2.52. And Jeff Capel's already making his way over to congratulate Brad Brownell. Tough birthday evening for Jeff and staff. But how about this win for Clemson? Uh, Clemson? Tim, you talked about how you never know what's happening in college basketball. Well, the game is always, all seasons, including this one, game is easier when the ball goes in the basket and it went in the basket for Clemson tonight. Yes, it did. We will be back to wrap things up in a moment. Off of the bench, Mr. Fox got into the act. 20-point win for Clemson here. And, Dan, I was really impressed with the way the Tigers played. This is just their second road win of the season. Well, they were outstanding defensively, Tim, and you can always count on them to be outstanding defensively. And uh, But they made their three-point baskets today. They made 12 of them, 13 of them. Enjoy your march towards March, my friend. Thank always you. Always a pleasure. Any cameo with you is uh, a cameo I'll take. Uh, Tim, I enjoyed it. Thanks. Well, coming up, don't forget that matchup tomorrow, as we mentioned, our final here, 72-252. Many thanks to our executive producer, Rob Reichley. Tonight's game directed by Peter Loomis. For all of them, it's the Dan Bonner. This is Tim Brando saying so long from Pittsburgh.